start you? Yes, I'll start. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Marco. I, I'm ready in any case. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Israel and Italy Cooperation in Horizon Framework Programs uh, Seminar. We are very excited to have you all together with us to celebrate this unique collaboration and um, uh, between our two countries. Uh, in order to open this uh, session, I would like to ask Smadar Shapira, Councillor for Public Affairs at the Embassy of Israel in Italy, to uh, say a few opening words. Smadar. Thank you very much, Nili, and good morning, shalom, buongiorno a tutti to all of you. Many thanks to all of you for joining us today. I'm very delighted to greet you on behalf of the Embassy of Israel in Roma. Uh, I have to say just before we start that we had a difficult week in Israel and uh, we had three terror attacks and I would like to convey our condolences to the families and the swift injury, uh, the swift uh, recovery to the injured people who are still in hospitals. Um, we are very uh, satisfied to see so many Italian and Israeli researchers and technology managers from companies, from universities, from research institutes and, and other stakeholders that are joining us today. The purpose of our meeting today, as Neely mentioned, is to overview the very successful cooperation between Israel and Italy under the EU research programs. And today we can look back with great satisfaction on our close cooperation under the previous program of Horizon 2020. And this is an opportunity to examine uh, some of the success stories of the few of the most outstanding projects that were developed so far and see what kind of conclusions we can draw uh, in light of the new research program of Horizon Europe. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to open by thanking our partners in this initiative. Uh, on the Italian side, thank you very much to APRE, the Italian Agency for the Promotion of European Research, and its director, Dr. Marco Falzetti. On the Israeli side, I would like to thank ISERD, the Israel Europe R&D Directorate, and its director, uh, Nili Shalev, the vice president of the Innovation Authority. And of course, our counterparts, the Embassy of Italy in Israel, and their scientific attaché, Dr. Stefano Ventura. And a special thanks goes to all the staff members of all of these organizations who worked very, very hard in order to create the discussion that we have here today. Uh, let me dedicate just a few words for the Israel-EU scientific cooperation. As you may know, Israel is one of the few neighboring countries that enjoys the closest scientific relations with the EU. Israel was the first non-EU country that was associated to the European framework programs already in 1996. And since then, Israel researchers have contributed to more than 5,000 joint research pro projects. Under Horizon 2020, approximately 2,000 researchers have received grants in Israel in a total value of about 1.3 billion euros. Uh, Israel provided, uh, proved to be an extremely valuable and efficient partner. Uh, and the results are comparable to that of the most well-performing member states of the EU. Um, in Israel, we have very high public expenditure on R&D, approximately 4.5% of our GDP. And this figure demonstrates the national commitment of Israel to invest in R&D. And when you combine this figure with the outstanding academic excellence of Israeli research institutes and with a strong commitment of the industry to invest in new groundbreaking technologies. All of these factors makes Israel a reliable and valuable, valuable partner for European R&D. Um, on the bilateral relations between Israel and Italy, of course, we have very friendly, very close relationship. We have geographical proximity. We have the Mediterranean cultural similarities. And we also have a strong economic complementarity. Uh, major Italian sectors which are based on strong manufacturing production constitutes a large potential market for the Israeli advanced technologies and we see very strong cooperation and interest in collaborations in cyber security, agrotech, smart mobility, food tech and other sectors. 
We also have a very close cooperation on academic and scientific bilateral uh, relations. We have signed our first scientific uh, cooperation agreement already in the 70s. And um, a few years ago, we have signed a new R&D bilateral cooperation between Israel and Italy, uh, which have already financed more than 200 projects. And uh, within this framework, we also established 10 joint research labs, which is um, a, a very, uh, for the benefit of the future of both sides uh, and a major achievement in itself. Uh, we enjoy very close cooperation with many academic institutions in Italy, among them CRUI, the network of rectors of all universities and NETVAL. And we are very happy also to see their representatives here today with us. Uh, I would just like to put now uh, the slide if possible. Uh, and just to tell the academic um, contacts in uh, the audience that uh, for any academic cooperation, I will be your contact person. If you would like to contact us for any connection with an Israeli academic institution, please feel free to do it. We also have two economic uh, and commercial attaches here in Italy. Uh, here in Roma, in the embassy, we have Minister Rafael Zinger, the next slide, um, who is um, sitting here with us and we would be uh, very happy if all the companies will be in touch with him. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Um, I wanted to present his details. And we also have in Milano, uh, Jonathan Hadar, uh, who is uh, located in, the, um, in our offices uh, in Milano and would be uh, more than happy to be in contact with all the companies that are present here today in the discussion. I'm sorry, the slide didn't go through. Anyhow, uh, I would like now to give the floor to our counterpart and friend, Dr. Stefano Ventura, the scientific attaché of the Italian embassy in Israel. And thank you all once again for joining us. And Dr. Ventura, please, the floor is yours. Stefano, you are on mute. Can you please unmute yourself? Sorry, sorry. Thank you, Asmadar, and thank you. Thanks to all the organizer and co-organizer for this uh, very important opportunity to strengthen the uh, collaborative links uh, uh, between uh, Italy and Israel in science and technology. Uh, I want to start from uh, uh, the, the main field of work of the uh, science office of the Embassy of Italy in Israel, that is the uh, cooperation agreement uh, uh, between uh, Italy and Israel running from uh, the beginning of this uh, millennium, uh, from the year 2002, um, with a lot of different activities. Um, what is important, why it, this, uh, this agreement is important uh, uh, for the uh, collaboration at the European level? Because it offers the opportunity to open new collaborations at the, at the starting level to uh, widen the number, uh, the, the, the sectors and uh, increase the numbers of uh, the number of active collaborations between uh, Italy and Israel. There are several actions of the um, of the agreement that help uh, um, establishing uh, scientific collaboration. There's the bilateral scientific uh, uh, projects, uh, there's bilateral industrial projects, uh, and uh, as Madar cited also the joint laboratories, uh, uh, but the, the focus is on the opening on new uh, opportunities. So increase the number of groups uh, in Italy and in Israel that uh, activate uh, collaboration, scientific collaborations. Of course, the, the budget of the um, cooperation agreement is limited, so we cannot do too much with the, with the budget, with the available budget. What we can do is to uh, start. It's a, a seed money that is very useful to uh, uh, come to the submission of uh, stronger uh, applications, stronger program projects uh, at, uh, at the European level. And uh, what is the, uh, so starting from this point, uh, I think that uh, 
we have to to make a full use of the uh, available tools in the in the bilateral agreement but with the focus of uh, having a scale up uh, in the um, uh, European uh, at the European level and of, of course also looking for other sources of uh, financing but uh, now we are uh, talking about the European level so uh, what are the advantages to pass from a bilateral agreement to a multilateral agreement? How is typical for the for the um, uh, for the pro uh, programs uh, projects in the, at the European level? First of all, the, the advantages is to, to enter consortia with a, uh, with a strong stronger position. So, if we enter consortia together. Uh, after having worked uh, together, then our uh, participation to uh, European uh, uh, consortia uh, will be sh surely stronger and uh, will have to, uh, the possibility to cover uh, wider, uh, sub, uh, wider fields. So that's very important uh, to access uh, consortia from a, a, a stronger point, uh, a starting point. Uh, but we uh, we also want to uh, uh, I want to underline that there are also um, advantages uh, either for the Italian partners and for the Israeli partners. I see the the main advantage for the uh, Italian partner is to link to uh, um, research groups that have very high level of uh, in science and technology. Um, with a tradition of research and uh, we really uh, get a benefit in collaborating with the Israeli institutions, uh, top level Israeli institution and to, to strengthen the, the level of our proposals. But also the Israeli have an advantage that is using Italy as a, as a system to enter in a, in a, a more uh, uh, productive uh, form the European market and the European innovation uh, market and the innovation uh, sector in Europe. So uh, there are both there are advantages uh, for both partners in uh, keeping a strong bilateral collaboration and use this strong bilateral collaborations to access uh, Horizon Europe. This is the message I wanted to to, to give to all um, participants. And uh, also the uh, science office, or to, to conclude, uh, underlining that the, the science office of the Embassy of Italy in Tel Aviv is open to uh, uh, give all support here in Israel. And uh, I can uh, add in the chat the, the email uh, can be used to contact us. That is very simple, Tel Aviv. Uh, uh, sci uh, scienza, it's in Italian, at uh, um, estri.it. I will write down uh, in the in the chat the the email. You can contact us. Uh, we, we you can find us on the on the website of the Minister of Foreign Affairs also, and uh, uh, we are ready to help uh, uh, colleagues, uh, Italian and Israeli colleagues. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stefano. I would like to ask Dr. Marco Falcetti, our co-host and our counterpart uh, or colleague, uh, to uh, say a few words on behalf of APRE, please. Thank you, Nili. Yes, I, I, I would prefer colleagues because we are working the same, um, on the, the same side of the, of the game. And uh, you know that the collaboration with ESERT is as a national counterpoint, uh, it stands for, for, for years. So first of all, I, I, I had to do that to, to, to add some, some uh, 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 thanks again. His, his mother already did it. I had to repeat, but I, I thank you. First of all, the colleagues are heard by both the colleagues from the, uh, uh, or let's say friends in that case, because we are not really colleagues as it is heard, but the embassy, the Israel embassy in Rome, and the colleagues, uh, Dr. Stefano Ventura of the, of the Italian embassy in, uh, in, in Israel, in Tel Aviv. So thanks a lot. And just a few words, really some, share just some concept. 
uh, when our colleagues from Israel came to us through the embassy to propose this day, um, our reaction was immediately uh, positive. And we have appreciated a lot the initiative of the Israel side to analyze the participation in Horizon 2020. So it was a really a good idea to do some things to promote what is already a big and positive initiative. And um, Stefano Ventura just, just repeated that uh, uh, there is a long lasting experience of strong collaboration, even at level of bilateral. So uh, nothing to do with the rise in Europe, or, but uh, there is a strong experience and historical examples of good collaboration on the science and technology between the two countries. And on top of that now, uh, this is already well, very well established also in the area of Framer program. Um, the analysis that has been carried out by our colleagues in Israel on Horizon 2020, clearly the, the picture is from the previous program because we have not information yet from the new program. So it is not just a, a picture of something that is in the past, but it is a picture that could help and stress again what to do and improve for the new program. We just started with the new programs. We have a long period of further collaboration in front of us, and we have to deal with that as much as possible. So as APRE uh, and, and the national counterpoint, uh, Italian national counterpoint Austrian organization, our main role is to provide evidence and provide uh, facilities to promote this collaboration. So that's why what we expect today is not just to have a sort of a family picture of a good collaboration, but to start to think how to improve this collaboration, or let's say from our point of view, how to support the improvement of this collaboration. Because at the end, the collaboration will be from our scientific and technological staff from the both sides, we can just provide evidence of uh, uh, facilities, uh, uh, or let's say a, a, a friendly ecosystem for this collaboration. That is our role and we are going to do the best. Just uh, the last couple of points. Uh, first, um, we have about 400 registration from Italy and almost the same from Israel. That is a, already a good idea that there is an interest to explore how to simplify collaboration. It's um, our colleague in Israel is know quite well that one of the main problems sometimes to, to create bridges between uh, uh, groups in Italy and groups in Israel is not the, uh, is, is not the scientific base, is to identify who is the best people to, 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 to join with. And that's why we have to do a good job for the future. So um, I'm going to finish uh, again. Uh, we start with colleagues in Israel to uh, build up some, let's say, some uh, 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 facilitation of, uh, of, of these links. We are at the beginnings. We are not at the hand of the games. We can improve and we will improve again. So please stay tuned because as far as concerned, our both sides, we will do our best to provide stakeholders of a simple channels to identify in Italy and in Israel, a common interest that will be easily transferred in terms of project preparation in the coming future. So thanks again for these days and thanks again for the organization from the Israel part and from the upper part. So, uh, Neil, uh, I will pass you the floor again and uh, I will follow, in any case, the, the activity today. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, everybody. And uh, again, I uh, totally uh, would like to convey also my sincere thanks to all the team at APRE and in ISERD, the embassies on both sides that organized and uh, uh, brought the idea to do the event. Sometimes it's uh, obvious or we think it's obvious uh, that connections are made and there is no need to facilitate connections. But I think that just looking at the numbers of participants here and looking at the chat, please take a look at the chat of how many people on both sides are looking for collaborations. I think uh, if at the end of the day, at the end of this session, we'll be able to uh, grasp and to 
do something with this uh, potential, we have, uh, we have done a lot. So uh, thank you everybody for participating. I would like to present um, a short presentation about a, a little bit about the Israel Innovation Authority and ISERD and about the collaboration uh, between both countries in Horizon. I'm not sure that, uh, just a second, I'll swap. I think now you can see my presentation. Uh, Italy, uh, a, a very strong uh, country with a huge uh, industrial and manufacturing. I think uh, presenting Italy to the world is much simpler than presenting uh, Israel, but we we'll learn a little bit about Italy in Horizon in a few seconds. A, a little bit about the innovation in Israel and the Israel Innovation Authority. Uh, so Israel's, uh, I think, is well known, and, and uh, you can see it here in the numbers, uh, uh, fr from its high-tech industry. Um, or, and, but the high-tech industry is not just uh, software. The high-tech industry today is expanding into all areas of activities, both climate, uh, both um, um, uh, healthcare, all, all of it is that we consider as high tech. And in Israel, it's a very large portion of our activity. 47% of Israel's uh, export is technology. We have record year in uh, capital raising and also we're able to establish in the last year, 72 unicorns, which is quite phenomenal for such a small country. Um, if we're looking at uh, Israel, Israel's main asset, because we don't have large manufacturing uh, companies and uh, large industry, we, we do have very, we invest quite a lot in R&D. As a matter of fact, we're number one in R&D investment in the world. And most of it is done by the private sector. So we are almost 5% of our GDP is invested in R&D. What we can see also in Israel, very typical to the Israeli activity is also the presence of multinational companies, uh, also some Italian that are in Israel and do R&D in Israel together with local companies or establish their own R&D uh, facilities. They are about 50% of our industrial R&D activity. Israel is also uh, a very small, a small country and small country ha doesn't have a lot of benefits, but one of the benefits is creating a very tight ecosystem and academia, uh, multinational companies, startup companies, as well as government work together very closely and create a strong ecosystem of innovation. The Israel Innovation Authority where ISERD is, uh, its mission is to promote the technological innovation in Israel uh, for the sustainable and inclusive growth of the country. What do we do? We invest in R&D. We have R&D schemes, uh, to invest in industrial R&D. We gear up for future technologies and we do also enabling activities to remove barriers from the market. Uh, we start from the single entrepreneur or even, excuse me, from academia to industry collaboration, single entrepreneurs and startups, collaborative, uh, competitive R&D, and international, strategic international collaboration. If we look at the international collaboration landscape of Israel, you can see that it's quite broad, but I can say that Italy on a bilateral level and Italy as a partner in the Horizon Europe and the European Framework Program is a very significant uh, collaborator of Israel and a very significant country for us. What do we do in international collaboration? Again, we touch upon all the life cycle of a project or an idea from transfer of knowledge from industry to academia to competitive R&D schemes that you heard about from Stefano and Smadar uh, bilateral funds that we have with some countries and Horizon Europe. Israel has been an associated country to Horizon Europe for 26 years. I may say it, it is a very successful association. We contribute to the program and this gives us the possibility to compete on all the programs. So all the program is open to our participation. The, we manage our participation via ISA, the Israel Europe 
uh, Israel EU Research and Innovation Directorate at the Innovation Authority. And like uh, Marco said, we are the interface to the European Framework Program and our aim is to assist Israelis to find the right partners and to maximize their participation and contribution to the Framework Program. Italy and Israel in Horizon. So Italy is the fifth larger, largest participator in Horizon 2020 with almost 8,000 projects, 5.6 billion euros in contribution. Uh, Italy is uh, more than 8% of the total program, which is huge. Today, the Horizon Europe was 77 billion euros. Horizon, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Horizon 2020 was 77 billion euros. Horizon Europe will be more than 100 with the participation of associated countries. So this is a huge uh, country that participates um, uh, in the program. 57% of Italy's participation is, acad is academia and 37% private sector, which is quite similar to Israel as well. Um, Israel is the, sec is the 12th largest participator in Horizon 2020 which I may say is quite remarkable, given the fact that we are an associated country to Horizon. We have 1,600 projects. Uh, we received about 1.3 billion euros in contribution. Our profile though is uh, very strong in ERC and EAC. These are mono beneficiary grants and we need to step up our activity in collaboration. So this is a call to all the participants to look at the collaborative programs, which are the, the major part of the program in Horizon Europe and, uh, and see the opportunities there. Because over there we have uh, a, a huge potential to increase our collaboration. 64% uh, of, uh, of our participation is academic participation and 34% is from the private sector. Israel is about 2% of the total program. When we look at the collaboration between the countries in Horizon 2020, among Italy's cooperation with associated countries, Israel is number two. Switzerland is the first collaborator, but we maybe unfortunately, uh, Switzerland currently does not participate in Horizon Europe. So we have the chance here to be number one. Uh, uh, from the associated countries. We have 534 joint projects with uh, almost 1,700 Italian participants and 700 Israeli participants. And uh, according to that, uh, this is how the funding is dispersed. So uh, uh, 580 million goes to the Italian partners in the project and 240 for the Israeli partners. The areas that we collaborate the most are ICT and security, health, smart and green tr transportation, food security and sustainable agriculture. And we also collaborate in the research infrastructure programs in uh, many research infrastructures. You can find Israeli and Italian participation in, a, in joint research, in, in joint infrastructure. What we can see is that Italy is a very strong coordinator of projects, at least compared to Israel. So Italy uh, leads in coordination with 118 joint projects that are led by Italian coordinators. You can see here uh, some of them RIA, most of them RIA, EIA and CSA projects. And you can see in what areas, again, the ICT, security, uh, health and climate, these are the main thematic areas. Uh, coordination, uh, Israel is not a strong coordinator and coordination is key to uh, successful participation. So I think here we have uh, room to learn from our Italian colleagues and definitely to join our Italian colleagues uh, being good coordinators. If we want a snapshot of uh, uh, the top Italian entities that participate, uh, we have a majority of participation. These are the leading uh, 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 Italian entities. We have a strong participation of academia and multinational Italian companies. Um, and when we look at Israel, it's very similar. So we have 
uh, uh, strong uh, multinational Israeli companies, but also multinational companies and strong participation of the academia as well. Uh, I think there is opportunity here to take our relationship even further. The program is much larger and there are many, many opportunities for collaboration. So I hope we will find ways to increase our collaboration even further. And I would like to thank everybody for uh, participating in this session and uh, joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, Sarit. Hey, hey, thank you, Nelly. Thank you for the great uh, overview. Um, Matilda, would you like to take it from here for our next session, please? I'm, I'm, I'm glad to pre present my colleague, Matilda de Bonny. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Sari. Oh, okay. Thank you all. Um, I hope you can hear me. Sorry for my voice today, but I will not talk too much. I will, of course, leave free space and open uh, space for discussion to our guests today. So I'm Matilda de Bonis and uh, as head of international cooperation in APRE, I'm taking care of the initiatives and the activities uh, related to international cooperation that concerns APRE engagement with third countries other than, of course, uh, European, the European Union members. And then today, I guess we can start with this session by welcoming all, all our guests from the most successful success stories of cooperation between Italy and Israel. And uh, that's why I would like to start from the uh, coordinators of our projects today on the stage. And then we will move to the panel discussion with all our guests from Israel. Uh, so I'm very pleased today to welcome um, Giovanni Giuliano, researcher as the, at the Biotechnologies and Agro-Industry Division of Enea that focuses on innovation in the agro-industrial system for the development and competitiveness of food productions um, in terms of quality, safety, sustainability, and also encouraging chain approaches through agro-industrial and territory clusters. And uh, today uh, we have Dr. Giuliano with a very long-standing experience in European projects at a national and international level. Uh, among these, there is, of course, um, G2P Soil, uh, that is this project. Uh, the full title is Linking Genetic Resources, Genomes and Phenotypes of Solenaceous Crops. And this is really featured by the European Commission itself as, um, as a best practice of bilateral cooperation. So thank you, uh, Giovanni, to join us today. And then, uh, hello. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh... I'm uh, sharing my screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, we can see uh, the screen. And uh, Giovanni, sorry if I interrupt you. I will, uh, I will get first to the first introduction of all the speakers today, and then I will give you the full floor uh, okay, for the presentation sorry, sorry. of the project. Then I will uh, stop the, the sharing. Sorry. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you. And uh, I would like also to uh, thank for uh, her participation, uh, Alessandra Ferlini, and she is associate professor at the University of Ferrara and where she is the director of the medical genetics unit and section. And she is collaborating with several European and international research groups in particular by studying new therapeutic approaches for rare diseases, uh, novel functional pathways, novel disease gene identification by omics, but also uh, molecular diagnostics innovation um, via high to how put techniques and next generation sequences. And she has been also chair of the working group on biomarkers with um, international rare diseases alliances. And uh, thank you, Alessandra, for being here. So here we have uh, our um, other project is Aloha, represented today uh, by Paolo Meloni. Uh, is currently assistant professor at the Department of Electronic and Electronic Engineering at the University of Cagliari is author, of course, of several international papers uh, on electronic engineering, and uh, uh, he's mainly focused on the development of advanced digital systems uh, with emphasis on the application-driven design and programming of multi-core and chip architectures. And today he's presenting the, the project Aloha uh, about th that aims to facilitate implementation of uh, deep learning algorithms on heterogeneous low energy computing problems. So, uh, thank you all uh, for being here. 
And let's start from G2P soil, um, led by Dr. Giovanni Giuliano. Thank you for being here and uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction and uh, I'll try to be fast and also uh, informative if possible. Um, uh, a Israeli partner uh, from the G2P Sol uh, project, uh, Dr. Ilan Paran from the Agriculture Research Organization of Israel is also here. He will participate in the panel discussion. So, uh, so uh, the uh, I call the G2P Sol project a cornucopia full of traits. So traits are what makes plants interesting for humans. Uh, traits is like Productivity, um, uh, fruit color is a trait, fruit firmness is a trait, the uh, fruit flavor is a trait. So uh, here we are, we are hunting for traits in Solanaceae crops. So as you know, um, plants are essential for life on planet. They make the oxygen they, we, um, we consume, they fix the CO2. And the bad news is that presently about 40% of plant species are at least risk of extinction, uh, according to the latest uh, reports. Uh, and what is a way to counter that risk? Uh, it's gene banks. So the seed repositories, there are about 4 million different varieties of crop plants that the white relatives are stored in worldwide germ plasm banks. And uh, this is an enormous treasure. And uh, uh, just to make a comparison, it's like a very nice uh, library, like the Bibliotheca Angelica in Rome, in which you have a priceless collection of ancient books, but you have a very sketchy catalog. So only experts can find the book chapter they are looking for. So Solanaceae. Solanaceae are potato. Uh, it's the fourth food crop in the world. It feeds about uh, uh, 700 million people. Tomato is the first um, um, horticultural crop in the world. Eggplant and pepper are, are slightly less important than tomato and potato globally, but they are very important for Mediterranean and Near Eastern and Far Eastern uh, culture and cuisine. So these are the big four of the Solanaceae that in total, they make about 37 billion euros of production value in Europe and 228 worldwide. So to characterize the worldwide uh, genetic resources of these four crops, we set up this GDP sold project. It's a really global project. The um, red dots are full partners. The orange dots are um, associate partners. And there are, of course, three partners from Israel, the Hebrew University, Dr. Dani Zamir, the um, Phenom Networks, which is a company that manages our data. It's Yaniv Semel is the chairman and the Agriculture Organization of Israel, Ilan Koran, among the 19 full partners. And this uh, full partnership had in its uh, gene banks about 64,000 accessions of these four crops. And we wanted just to characterize them, to understand what was in this library of accessions. And first of all, what we did is we collected the passport, phenotypic and image data just in one place. And this is a database that is managed by Phenom Networks, by the Israeli company. And this is fully accessible by everybody. It's public right now. The second step, we did a huge DNA barcoding experiment in which we uh, established the uh, relationships between these different accessions. So we were able to um, see what was there, what species were represented, and also some misclassification. So you see this black clade in the pepper, this is capsicum annum, but you, some, you see some green here. 
So this was false in the annum clade, but this is a misclassification. The gene bank had classified it as frutescence. So we corrected some mistakes that were present in the gene banks. Step three was by, by looking at all, all these global accessions was to reconstruct how these crops uh, diffused in, in the world from the origin of, uh, of diversity. So for instance, pepper as a, a diversity center in Mesoamerica, and those are the most likely roots that we reconstructed by doing this DNA barcoding um, all over the world. So you can see, this is the Vasco da Gama route around Africa. This is the Silk Road that brings pepper from Europe all the way to China. China is a very important um, center of diversity for this crop. And then we constructed core collections. So small collections of these thousands and thousands of accessions, which are manageable to field trials. So we planted the fields with these core collections that represent the global diversity. And we used all these data finally to find genome regions that control important traits in these crops. So for instance, here you have tomato, you have the different chromosomes of tomato. You see this dot here and this dot here. These are two genes localized in these regions that control earliness. So the time uh, that a tomato takes from planting to making the first fruit. And that's a very important, of course, agricultural trait. We did a lot of training, uh, uh, one training school in India, one in Bacheningen, one in Lima, and one was due to be organized in, uh, in uh, uh, in uh, Jerusalem, but due to COVID, it was made online. And of course, we did a uh, lot of dissemination. This is the final workshop of the project. We had about a thousand registered participants from 61 countries, but 30% of them were um, from private sector. So small companies from, uh, especially from Southeast Asia and Africa that are very interested in the project data to use these traits for, for breeding. Uh, so this is the, uh, all this was done by very, very uh, energetic and, uh, and diverse group of people. This is one of the meetings of the project that we had in Ein Gedi in, uh, in, uh, in Israel. And just to conclude a message for the funding authorities of these bilateral efforts, we have a saying in Italy, which is non si fanno le nozze coi fichi secchi. So in English, it uh, sounds a little bit like you don't make marriage just with dried figs. Uh, and with that, I would like to thank you and conclude my, my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Giovanni. Um, thank you for your presentation. And now I would give the floor to Alessandra Ferlini presenting the project Screen for Care, uh, shortening uh, the time to diagnosis and treatment, treatment of patients with rare diseases. So uh, Alessandra, the floor is yours. You can share your presentation. Thank you, Matilde. I will share my screen. I hope you can, you can see it and put on presentation mode. Okay. So uh, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to present uh, the screen for care uh, uh, to, this, uh, to this audience and for this very interesting event. So I'm Alessandra Ferlini. As I said, Matilda, I'm a medical geneticist that, uh, in terms of background and MD. And I have uh, uh, the great uh, pleasure and honor to be the scientific coordinator of uh, this EU IMI uh, um, research project we call Screen for Care, meaning shortening the path to rare disease uh, diagnosis using newborn genetic screening and digital technologies. So I have the pleasure to co-coordinate this EU project with Pfizer 
Uh, I am from the University of Ferrara and Pfizer is uh, led by Nicola Garnier, who is the director of patient advocacy at the Pfizer um, uh, Ray Disease Global Development. And this is our symbol and logo of the screen for care. So the Screen for Care is a multidisciplinary project uh, with three, uh, composed by three main pillars. Uh, the first one is try to build up a, a federated metadata repository, including all data related to rare diseases, uh, um, and uh, in order to get, uh, uh, you know, to maximize knowledge about uh, this type of diseases, you know that rare diseases are rare, if we take them singularly, but are frequent and affecting more than 30 million people in Europe. And then we also have a very innovative task running genetic uh, newborn screenings, so early diagnosis at the zero time, zero um, time for, for these infants in order to get, uh, uh, you know, a very uh, timely uh, early diagnosis for this patients and to provide them with the new therapeutic options that have, have been made available during the last uh, 20 years. And the third pillar is based on digital uh, um, technology and artificial based intelligence, uh, which will be used in order to build up a, you know, app, so uh, basically called the symptom checker, which is might be able to help uh, all, uh, uh, you know, rare disease uh, patients, uh, medical doctors, stakeholders in general, to uh, correctly address the diagnostic pathway and uh, therefore, again, to accelerate uh, the time to get the, the final diagnosis. Uh, screen for care uh, has a, um, a few main expected outputs and we have identified some key performance indicators in order to monitor the, the project progressing. And as I, as I said before, the, the, the main outputs that might have a lot of, uh, you know, dissemination and exploitation, um, you know, consequences are the, the, the landscape analysis for uh, diseases in Europe, the genetic newborn screening uh, that will be uh, applied to 20,000, up, up to 20,000 infants in Italy, uh, Germany, and the Czech Republic in terms of running sites for genetic newborn screening and the developing of, uh, you know, artificial intelligence algorithms, which will be used to interrogate electronic health records and then the symptom checker app to be provided to all, you know, the stakeholders of our rare disease community. So impact, as you see, and many consequences are, you know, at birth, because in the infants, we can, you know, provide example and a, a strategy to be used for newborn screening across European countries. Early onset disease, early onset di diagnosis for some rare diseases applying new genomic medicine strategies as all genome sequencing. Uh, um, Moshi will tell you more about this type of uh, analysis and uh, related issues in uh, his presentation. And uh, of course, uh, healthcare provider cycling, so monitoring all the strategy, the diagnostic path of uh, uh, our patients. And in terms of output and impacting uh, of the screen for care, of course, we may be able to develop new diagnostic tools, new genetic, new bone screening strategy, of course, to, uh, you know, interrogate and to address the very important ethical issues which are related to genome studies in infants. We can recognize new uh, rare disease phenotypes and we, we will try to harmonize the use of electronic uh, health records across European countries. And at the end, we will have novel digital tools that might be applied uh, into the routine uh, clinical setting for, for patients and also medical doctors. I don't want into detail, this is the overall picture of the screen for care, just to let you know that we have 
six different work packages with a lot of tasks, work package leaders and uh, participants. So it's a very complex and uh, comprehensive multidisciplinary project. You can follow us up uh, at our uh, brand new uh, website you see here. We are on Twitter as well. So if you like to chat with the screen for care and on LinkedIn and for any questions, please uh, uh, just find the email of FITSA and my own email here. You can just contact, that, contact us. And so you see here the full partnership we composed by 35 uh, partners, of course, coming 50-50, almost from industries, small medium enterprises and academic partners. You see here uh, University of Ferrara, which is the scientific coordinator and FITSA, which is the project leader. And uh, uh, this is the opportunity to let, uh, uh, you know, to present the, the you know, to Moshi, the Israel uh, part, uh, partner of the screen for care, mainly involved in very important uh, um, activities related to bioinformatics and the genomic output analysis. So you see here Israel as a partner of the screen for care and here uh, the, uh, our partnership uh, with many uh, colleagues and uh, institutions. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, I can stop my sharing and I can you know just pass the word to Moshe. Thank you. Thank you Alessandra and thank you Moshe to be here. And sorry if I did not introduce you, but um, I, I would like now to, to give you the floor. We are very glad to have you and to have this joint presentation uh, with Alessandra about the screen for care. The floor is yours. Uh, no, so I, um, I think that we should uh, move to the next uh, company or, or collaboration for presentation. Uh, and I'll be happy to elaborate more maybe on the panel or if there are any specific questions. I think that uh, Alessandro did a very good job covering the, the entire project, and I'll be happy to elaborate about the Israeli uh, side later on. Thanks. Thank you so much, Moshe. Thank you very much for your contribution anyway. And uh, I would like also to thank, uh, uh, so again, Alessandro for this project that is recently started and is ongoing. It's really a concrete opportunity now for creating synergies and looking at your exploitable assets and results. So thank you very much. And now I would pass the floor to uh, Paolo Meloni, representing the project ALOA. And uh, the floor is yours, Paolo. You can share your presentation. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you, Matilda. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, good morning to everybody. Do you see my screen? Uh, am I sharing correctly the screen? Yeah? Yes. 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 OK. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, so today I'm presenting uh, uh, our ALOA project. Uh, the title of the project is uh, Software Framework for Runtime Adaptive and Secure Deep Learning on Heterogeneous Architecture. You have the website here if you want uh, to check more in detail. I will give just a brief overview today. Um, so uh, the, the project is uh, funded uh, uh, in the industrial leadership pillar uh, and um, in the uh, customized and low energy computing uh, topic. So it's basically a computer architecture, um, um, uh, uh, let's say computer science design and programming project. Uh, so um, the project started in uh, January 2018 and lasted until uh, the 30th of June 2021 and the overall budget was around 6 million. Uh, so this is the um, consortium. Uh, I have highlighted the Italian partners, quite a big share, and the, the, the Israeli partners here. And uh, Giuseppe De Soli from ST Micro has been acted as, uh, as project, uh, acting as project coordinator and I've been acting as scientific coordinator. And uh, before starting these activities, uh, I had almost no gray hair. And today you see, you see my condition. Um, so uh, we have the 40 different partners from, uh, I think, uh, six different countries. Uh, shared, uh, let's say, uh, let's say, a more or less balanced share between uh, industry, academy, uh, big companies, and and SMEs. Um, so the, the the main objective of Aloha is uh, uh, very in general bringing deep learning at the edge. So deep learning, uh, probably most of you have heard about deep learning so far. 
so deep learning is a class of uh, AI algorithms which are proving to be very accurate and very uh, efficient in a lot of different application domains. And the idea behind Aloha and a lot of projects like Aloha is uh, trying to move from a classic uh, uh, deployment scheme where the analysis is uh, the data analysis, the deep learning algorithm is executed on the cloud and uh, the, the embedded uh, uh, IoT nodes are just sampling data and sending it to the cloud to something more at the edge. So moving uh, some part of the analysis at least uh, to be executed directly on the embedded board that is uh, uh, sampling the data. So moving all the analysis near the sensor. So this uh, provides several advantages. Uh, be, uh, among these, we can find uh, improved responsiveness, um, relaxed requirements in terms of bandwidth, increased privacy and increased resilience. So some application domains or some uh, kinds of application use cases cannot uh, be actually implemented using a complete cl cloud-based uh, deployment. They need to, to, to have some analysis executed uh, near the sensor. Uh, so to support this kind of shift, uh, in Aloha, we have created an uh, integrated utility tool flow uh, that can be used by a designer, by a programmer, by some kind of embedded developer. Uh, driving and helping this designer over the different phases of a, um, a deployment design flow. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, utilities and a lot of tools that um, try to find an optimal solution, an optimal uh, software and hardware configuration uh, that is optimized in terms of uh, uh, accuracy of the analysis, in terms of uh, uh, energy consumption, so, so in order to have uh, uh, increased portability and increased battery life duration, um, increased security in terms of resilience to cyber attacks, and also we have developed all the kind of um, uh, techniques which are now state of the art for for let's say what implementing what we we call uh, parsimonious deep learning so reducing as much as possible the requirements in terms of computing power associated with with uh, the, the uh, with the execution of deep learning algorithms and uh, what is the impact what is the, the, the uh, usefulness what, what kind of use people can make of this kind of tool flow so the idea is basically to reduce the amount of effort and the, the, the required skills uh, for moving from one problem uh, to, to its actual um, solution implemented on embedded hardware. So moving from, the, from a data set that defines your, your problem through a selection of the optimal algorithm parameters, uh, training and optimization of the, the selected solution, and then deployment on, on a, uh, a microprocessor, on a selected microprocessor. So we have uh, assessed this kind of tool over some different use cases provided by our partners and uh, what came up was that, that we uh, are enabling to traverse the flow uh, for one project from something that uh, with a manual flow takes something like months to, to something that can be performed in days with manual uh, with minimal manual intervention, this means that the same designer can take care of multiple designs at the same time. So all the utilities that we have created uh, can, can be accessed as open source. So this is a, a, a quite interesting um, exploitation channel that we have uh, chosen to, to use in Aloha. And uh, everything is available on GitLab and you can access them and, and use it uh, as you wish. Uh, so for some other examples of uh, uh, commercial direct exploitation that have been deriving by, by the project outcomes, uh, for example, I, I would like to present some of the use cases that have been, have been implemented in the project, focusing on, on uh, results obtained in Israel and Italy. So for example, uh, Reply, one company in Italy uh, that uh, has been cooperating with STMicro, uh, has been implementing a controller for a, a robotic arm that, that can be activated by voice that dissipates um, a very limited amount of, uh, of processing power and uh, can perform the, the, the classification of keywords uh, in, in real time. And this is compatible with uh, a very long battery um, 
lifetime duration and so it's 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 a pretty uh, interesting and commercializable result and this is another use case that was um, uh, uh, developed by uh, our maxq ai partners from from israel and this is a um, uh, um, uh, deep neural network that uh, highlights lower grade gliomas in MRI scans. This can be executed on a, um, a lower power um, uh, embedded platform and uh, can be uh, executed with uh, much more comfortable time performance with respect to, to the uh, cloud-based implementation that was in place before the starting of, of ALOA. Uh, these are just, uh, in a nutshell, the kind of outcomes that we have obtained in this uh, in the in this project. And uh, for any other kind of information, just please uh, reach me out. And I will be glad to provide you more 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 details. Uh, this is my email, and uh, uh, thank you everybody for listening. Thank you, thank you very much, Paolo, for your presentation. And now I think we can start with a round table with all of you. But first, I would like to. Uh, to tell you that I have shared in the chat also to all the audience uh, um, the, the, the link for join the Q&A on, uh, on Slido. And uh, of course, um, uh, you can uh, use this tool uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to address your questions during the, the roundtable. And uh, now I would like to first ask uh, Sarit as co-moderator in this panel discussion to introduce the Israeli partners uh, of these projects. Thank you, Matilda. And thank you for the great speeches session. Um, my name is Rit Kemchi. I'm Director of Business and Development at ESERD at the Israel Innovation Authority. And I'm pleased to present uh, three wonderful Israeli representatives who are uh, prominent in, uh, participants in the, su the su success stories that were um, present presented earlier. And in addition, they represent a wide range of the Israeli ecosystem flavor, research, startups, and multinational company. I will present them uh, according to the order of pitches uh, before. First, um, uh, from the world of research, research I would, uh, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Ilan Paran. Ilan Paran is a senior researcher at the Volcanic Center in uh, Israel. The main focus of Dr. <coughs> Paran activity is pepper genetics and breeding. Um, is, is a major uh, group research interests are development of molecular tools of, uh, for paper uh, improvement. As uh, Giovanni mentioned before, Dr. Poran um, is one of three Israeli partners in the project, uh, GT, G2P uh, Soil, uh, Professor Dani Zamir from the Hebrew University and Phenom Network's uh, bioinformatics startup company. Uh, Ian Pan is a co-leading uh, work package in the project uh, with a partner from France. Moving to uh, our next panelist, I'm proud to present um, uh, the partner in Spain for Care Project, Moshe Heinerman, uh, which is the co-founder and CTO of Genox. Genox is a gen genomic analysis company uh, on a mission to make clinical genetics sequences more accessible and affordable using a cloud-based platform and a, u a usage of a community. Uh, last but not least, I'm privileged to present a key leader at a law project, Dr. Evgeny Shindin. Dr. Shindin is a research staff member in the IoT and wearable department at IBM Research Haifa. His research interests include uh, continuous time linear programming, robust optimization, machine learning, and semantic integration. Um, Dr. Shindin holds a M a Master's in Computer Science and also a PhD and, and, and Master's in Statistics from uh, Haifa University. As a senior researcher in IBM, Dr. Shindin served as a coordinator on a previous project, which was an in infrastructure for the, for the Hello projects presented today. So welcome all uh, Israeli side and of course, welcome to the Italian side and participants. Thank you very much, Sarit. And uh, now probably also going beyond these experiences of uh, Horizon 2020 projects, but uh, keeping these fields of research under the spotlight, 
um, we would like to start this roundtable by asking our panelists um, about the benefits of um, RNI cooperation between Italy and Israel. So, Sarit, please, please go first with your first questions um, to our guests, starting from the GTP to, GP to Soil project and Dr. Giovanni Giuliano. So, Sarit, the floor is yes. yours for your first question. Thank you, Matilda. Giovanni, I uh, would like to start uh, by outlining, uh, in your opinion, what is the value of such a cooperation considering, from one hand, um, um, the general need uh, when you're approaching an international partner? Uh, and from the second hand, highlight the strengths of your sector on uh, at a national level that makes uh, it attractive for international partners. You mean my sector in Italy or my sector yes. in Israel? No, I'm, I'm talking about uh, your thematic uh, sec sector. Okay, so, um, well, you know, um, we live in a, in a world, uh, up to now, we live in a, we have lived in a world of food security. And probably this is going to change pretty soon. I mean, with the war, the serial crisis, we, we are going to see much less food security. And then we will realize how important the food security, the breeding, the genetics uh, that, that brought this food security in our century, how important it was, because we, we are going to see tough times in the future. So we have to organize ourselves. Genetic resources are, are uh, the bread and butter of breeding. Uh, we have to, to uh, conserve them for future generations. So this is a key activity for humankind, I believe. Um, but uh, I think maybe Lan wants to add something to, to I would just I would just say. Yes, sure. Um, first, thanks for the invitation. I think uh, what I would like to emphasize is, is uh, as, as a, a major aspect of this project is that it's very large scale. Uh, in terms of many uh, different aspects, in terms of the countries, institutions, uh, disciplines, we combine uh, different in, uh, disciplines that can uh, allow us to uh, really uh, assess the diversity of, of the crops, many, many aspects, for example, disease resistance, uh, uh, tolerance to abiotic stress, uh, content of uh, beneficial uh, metabolites, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, the other thing is the is the number, as Giovanni said, uh, genetic resources is the is the is the uh, this is what geneticists are working on. This is the <clears throat> the raw material, and in this project we were able to collect uh, and assess and evaluate a very almost unprecedented uh, number of accessions uh, of, uh, uh, to, to, to the different traits. For example, in pepper, uh, we were uh, uh, evaluating about 10,000 accessions or, or, or plant uh, types. This is an immense number of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, coverage of the, of the of the crop and similar numbers uh, were uh, done for the other uh, crops. So that is uh, one uh, very important. It's very important in especially these days because this project allowed, actually created a platform that we can share genetic resources. And uh, this time, I mean, last years, it become, became very difficult to to move genetic resources, to share genetic resources with different partners due, due to tight regulation and phyto, phyto sanitary restrictions. So a key aspect of the project was to really lay down a, a, a platform that allow us to, to move and share these genetic resources so that all partners can contribute their expertise and, uh, and uh, information. On the same uh, um, on the same genetic resources. So this is what I consider a major benefit 
of the um, of the of the way the project was uh, organized. I would also take the would like to take the opportunity to really thank Giovanni as a coordinator. I think he made a really excellent work, and this is a key success, a key factor for a successful project. Thank you, Giovanni. <laughs> Thank you, Ilan. Uh, another question for you, uh, according to you just uh, your, your great uh, answer, uh, looking at uh, the strengths of the Israeli agri-food sector. How having an Israeli partner such as Volcani Center may allow uh, to improve research outcomes in, in cooperative research? One thing I would uh, also say in the, in, the, in, the, in the bilateral aspect is that uh, for agricultural research, uh, Israel and Italy are quite similar in terms of the of the agricultural uh, problems, the, the the focuses, the the, the crops. So collaboration uh, between the two countries is uh, very uh, relevant. And uh, on one end, on the on the other end, for example, in this project, uh, we had we exploited the different strengths of the different groups. For example, the Italian group uh, is very strong on, on eggplant. Uh, there were actually three, uh, well, we had mentioned the four, the, the, the three Israeli partners, but there are also four uh, Italian uh, partners working on uh, two groups on, on uh, eggplant, one group in tomato, and one group in, in pepper, so um, we're able to exploit the the you know the strength, the individual strengths of each of this uh, uh, of this of the, each of this uh, institution to get uh, into one common uh, goal. Uh, we are at the Volcanic Center. We are um, <clears throat> is a, we are a, 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 we belong to the Ministry of Agriculture, so we uh, develop. Um, genetic resources, which are later um, distributed to seed companies, for example. So seed companies in Israel and in Italy, and actually this material will be open to uh, all over the world. So eventually after we finish our evaluation and the data will be uh, accessible, all this data and also the seeds of this uh, uh, germ plants will be available to all the uh, interested, in, you know, uh, all the companies and research institutions that are interested in their particular crop and, and trades. If I may add something on, on that last observation of Ilan, I think a difference between Italy and Israel is that the private seed sector is much more active in Israel. So there we have to catch up with you guys and, and, and reinforce our, our national seed industry, which is uh, right now is taken over by, by mostly foreign companies. Thank you. Thank you, Giuliano. And thank you both for your visions on your specific sector of research. Also highlighting differences, but also similarities, the shared needs and also barriers that uh, needs to be overcome and uh, <clears throat> really uh, put efforts to, to create complementarities as you did actually. So um, now I would like to, to pass um, to, to, to another field of research that is held. And I would like to address uh, this question to Alessandra Ferlini. Uh, tell, I, I would like to tell you Alessandra about how you consider uh, cooperation uh, between Israel and Italy, which is the value of such cooperation in RNI, especially looking at the at the strengths and and the needs as well as we as we as we as we did um, of the biomedical sector in Italy, and in particularly considering your field of research that is medical genetics. So please give us your vision about uh, the perspective of such cooperation, starting from your fields of research. Of course, Matilde, thank you. So, uh, well, I, I think that uh, both Italy and Israel do share uh, a great experience in uh, our field of rare diseases. So, 
uh, and first and secondly because we also have uh, uh, you know a, a very uh, you know huge interest uh, and the pay paying a lot of attention in the genomic medicines so these are two fields where uh, our background and our co you know and the cooperation might definitely have a mutual benefit and indeed we have uh, Oh, apart from the screen for care that I mentioned before, there are other initiatives where uh, Italy and Israel are working together in this specific field. This is for many reasons, uh, a cultural, uh, also scientific background, but de definitely, um, you know, working together in innovative uh, techniques to study the human genome, especially from the bioinformatics, uh, uh, you know, as aspects, but also in terms of early diagnosis and the uh, uh, diagnostic approaches uh, as, for example, uh, genetic diagnosis and newborn screening or carrier screening. These are definitely uh, areas where cooperation is already active and we, there are, you know, there is room of improvement in terms of having further, further projects uh, uh, working together. And then, yeah, because we have Moshe here, I, I would like to have also his view. That would be, yeah. sorry, Matilda, oh. if I over, overpower yeah. your chair activity, but is that okay? Maybe, yeah, I, I can also uh, contribute uh, how, how we th see things from, from our end. So one of the things that, uh, that, was, that was seen in previous presentation was that Israeli is indeed in the, you know, very uh, advanced in the in tech, high tech, uh, lots of unicorns and so on. And our role in this consortium is focused in the bioinformatics and data analysis of, uh, of genetic information. Uh, and this is an area where we are seeing, uh, you know, Israeli as a, a, on one end as a, like very advanced and uh, as leaders. And I think that we can contribute a lot. Um, and in the, in the context of partnership with Italy and EU, you know the, the working with uh, with Alessandra and the uh, other um, uh, participant uh, from the from Italy uh, and the and the EU, we we get a sense and see how precision medicine and genetic testing is being uh, implemented uh, in 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 hospitals and organization in uh, in Italy, uh, which is a country which takes genetic testing. Uh, like uh, to, to the next level as part of this uh, uh, of this work, um, and also you know we as part the one of the things which was very fruitful um, from our end was uh, having Italian uh, uh, organization who leads the consortium and has the 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 right connection and the perspective which is a uh, very uh, oriented towards the uh, Italy and the, and the EU. So I hope that also uh, helps with, with our perspective on it. Yes, it helps a lot. And thank you so much, Moshe. And Alessandra, you really gave us uh, yeah, the, the, the overview of uh, probably the state of the art of the areas of cooperation that creates actually mutual benefits between Israeli and uh, Israel and I I Italy. In the, in the health sector and specifically in, in, your, in your sector. And really, um, it, it, it was also interesting, it's interesting to see uh, your vision as a representative of that panorama of companies like yours that provides solutions for healthcare systems and, uh, and clinical genetics, as you said. So really, uh, we, this is a really fruitful exchange and thank you, thank you for, having this uh, conversation here. Um, I would like now to um, complement these, uh, um, these uh, inputs from our panelists, uh, moving to another, uh, to another sector then, that is actually ACT, and we have here represented by the ALOA project. So I would ask Sarit to, um, to, to address our, our panelists um, representing this project today. Yes, thank you, Matilda. Um, Paolo, 
now coming to the ICT sector from your perspective as a researcher and as an innovator in electronic engineers, how is the sector positioned in Italy and what may offer in international partners, international level? Okay, so um, I think, uh, uh, thank you very much for, for, the, for the interesting question. So my opinion is that uh, Italy is a uh, complete uh, a minefield for 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 uh, design cases for interesting problems to to be solved with with novel uh, ICT te techniques and ICT approaches and uh, to the same this is a, this is a perfect mess. so let, let's uh, for example think about the the automotive sector or the the food sector or the agriculture sector is a is a source of the continuous uh, uh, problems that require an ICT solution and so it's definitely a, a, a very good match with uh, with uh, with a very high tech and, and digital uh, rich um, landscape as the the, the R and D landscape that, that you can find in Israel. So uh, I am a computer architecture, and probably it's 20 years now that I'm studying and using processors that that are uh, designed in Haifa, probably. So I mean, it's um, it's very interesting to to work with a lively community like like Israel. Uh, so dealing with 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 Aloha and also other previous projects that we had with with uh, uh, Israeli um, uh, companies, so we we found out that there is a quite interconnected landscape of uh, big enterprises and uh, small and medium enterprises and startups, and this is very uh, good for for cross fertilization and uh, mutual influence between the kind of. Uh, uh, the, let's say, uh, research activities that we can uh, carry on in Italy and the, the kind of solutions that may come from, from Israel. So, so I think this is a perfect match and this is why we have uh, been uh, working so actively in at least uh, two, three projects now uh, uh, with, with Is Israeli partners. Thank you, Paolo, for the interesting overview of the ICT sector uh, within Israel and Italy. Uh, Evgeny, um, which are the strengths, according to your opinion and perspective, as a researcher uh, of an international uh, key player such as IBM, uh, that could put uh, in both national level and also, of course, in the ICT sector in Israel to the table and the cooperation of Israel and Italy? You're on mute, Evgeny, sorry. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I just would like to say several words on Aloha. It was very interesting project, both in results and both in the consortium. It was very a great consortium uh, in this project, and uh, you know. Uh, is there are a lot of benefits to work with such international community and uh, i would like to say that uh, israel or that uh, italy in italy uh, people have a lot of knowledge in the ict sector they uh, because our our role in this project was mainly in mathematical optimization where we help to uh, schedule processes, uh, schedule execution on different core of processors. And uh, Italian parts works mainly on the on the processor itself, on the hardware and software partitioning, on the co-design, on the design of neural networks. So it was a good match between our skills and our area of interests. And also, uh, this is not only project that I participated. Uh, we also worked in the previous project with uh, also University of Cagliari and University of Sassari. And I think Italians is very, very, very strange in this uh, area of ICT. So I, I was very happy. Also, in the dissemination and exploitation part of the project, uh, 
the a lot of work was done by, by Italian partners. So I'm very happy, I was very happy to participate in this project and I think it's very good uh, match between our skills and our area of interest uh, for both projects we are participated together. Thank you very much, Eugenie, and thank you, Paolo, for your perspectives also in this sector, starting from your project experience of collaboration. Um, Sarit, if you don't mind, mainly for timing reasons, probably we can address all the panelists together, asking them uh, the second set of, uh, of, of questions. Mm. We would like now to move uh, um, to, to the focus uh, to move the focus to the actual funding opportunities that are set at European level and also beyond uh, to announce uh, such bilateral cooperation. So we would like to ask you, or all of you, um, to take the stock of such opportunities uh, offered by the Horizon Framework Programs for Research and Innovation, and probably also for what concerns the current Horizon Europe, how it should evolve in your opinion to ensure uh, and strengthen Italy-Israel cooperation, focusing on which specific areas of bilateral cooperation. And even if you have had experience of other problems for international cooperation in which you have really set um, a collaborative, collaborative research uh, at international level and probably between Israel and, Israel and Italy. So um, Sarit, if you, if you like, we can just uh, uh, wait for the panelists uh, uh, feedback and feel free to to say your perspective on this and your experience also about funding programs. Yes, thank you. Also, uh, actually, I think before um, from, to Matilda's questions, we would like to also to know, according to your uh, perspective, if you find additional benefits which are economical benefits, but not uh, precisely um, the financing, the direct financing that you get from the European. Uh, uh, submission. Uh, so if you have uh, any benefits of those that uh, you want to share, we'll be happy to. Yeah, let, let's happy. let's start from Gio Giovanni, if you like, so we, we can keep the same uh, circle order and, uh, and then we can go further. Yeah, uh, so I have just two very brief ob observations about uh, the Horizon framework. Um, I've had uh, up to now 14 European projects uh, from framework two uh, up all the way up to Horizon Europe. And um, what I've seen is that the core texts are becoming more and more specialized. So what I see is, um, can, I, can I say, it's lobbying in action. Uh, I think many of the core texts are predetermined by, by national representatives. And uh, they, they, they are focused on very, very specific sectors. So you can almost say who will be the consortium that will win that particular call. And this is, has increased over, over time. It was not like this in the bridge program, which was framework two. It, it becomes more and more evident. I don't think this is good for European science. I think the text course should be more comprehensive to allow a different set of actors to compete on a, on a level playing field. So the very uh, the, the high specialization of European call um, topics is not good for European science in my view. So that's one first observation of the funding. The second observation is I've had up to now a single bilateral European, Italian Israeli project funded. It was a lot of fun, um, but uh, it, was the, it was suffering from a little bit too much um, bureaucracy, at least on the Italian side. And um, and uh, the funding was absolutely not comparable with what you get from an European project. So I think in bilateral projects, there should be a little bit more effort to increase the funding. So those are the two messages that I would like to, to give. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you very much. 
um, for, for these highlights uh, on issues also. And, uh, and I would now ask her to complement your, um, your perspective um, in your sector and your experience uh, to Ilan, Ilan Parang. Would you like to add something about funding opportunities, your experience and the way forward? Um, I think uh, one, one of uh, um, uh, one of the reasons that uh, our project was uh, um, successful is that uh, it was uh, uh, based on a on prior um, relationship of many of the partners so that for, you know, as uh, Giovanni said, we are the, 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 the program deal with the Solanese crop. So there is a, a Solanese community, I would say, that is active uh, for more than 10 years in, from now. So I think, uh, and, and within this community, there was a, still a yearly uh, uh, meeting, uh, conferences and, and, uh, and, and discussion. So, uh, people uh, <clears throat> that are relevant to the to the research area have communicated before. So, because this is a main issue, how do you find the the the, the, the partners uh, and the, the right one and the complementary uh, with complementary skills? So, I think uh, that this uh, activity within the Serenese community was very uh, crucial to uh, form this uh, consortium and other consortium. So uh, I think if it's possible for the Italian and Israeli uh, authorities to uh, organize such, uh, you know, uh, conferences or, or, uh, or uh, either face to face or even Zoom so that uh, in specific area, uh, but not too specific as Giovanni said, uh, that would be uh, helpful to people to know each other, know the research uh, program that's going on and where are the, the potential uh, collaborations. Yeah, Thank you. This Thank is actually a great uh, opening starting in this event. It's a great uh, opening uh, starting uh, for uh, creating more of this uh, collaboration and initiatives together in the two countries. Um, yeah, I know, or um, um, uh, Evgeny from the Adobe uh, um, um, project. Hey, uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, you know, I I, I confirm with uh, Elon uh, that said that uh, it would be somehow beneficial to find the partners with different skills from different countries. It's, uh, you know, just now this works uh, on the kind of Sarafan radio, you know, this guy from this, uh, from this uh, organization from some previous project, you know how it works, you can uh, suggest him to, to, to join to another project. And so it's work, but uh, I think it would be more beneficial if there are, will be some open forum where uh, people can meet uh, one another and uh, find uh, counterparts for the new projects. So it's from my experience from different uh, European projects. This, these are my Thank suggestions. You. Thank you, Jenny, for your suggestions and precious inputs also. And Paolo, would you add, like to add something about funding opportunities and no, your experience? I mean, about funding opportunities, I'm saying, so if I take it from the ALOA point of view, uh, I think that having a look at the kind of, uh, of uh, uh, topics that are proposed in the new program, also if we look both at the, the uh, Horizon Europe and at uh, KDT, uh, we find that there is a lot of uh, topics that are interesting and are more or less the natural uh, prosecution of what we've been doing in ALOA and what uh, uh, frankly, a lot of other groups are are, are doing. So it's definitely something that it, that is uh, already covered in the in the new calls. So uh, definitely something that we should have a plan 
to focus on, to, to, to keep on uh, building on top of what we have already achieved, even in terms of, uh, of connections. So using the same partners, adding more partners, um, taking uh, profit of the previous uh, uh, experience that we have to, to, to build on top of that. And uh, um, in, in, in our specific case, uh, I think that, that uh, it's uh, uh, definitely something that is allowed by, by the, the, the next next calls so something that is already uh, going to be requested by, by the next uh, 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 already published uh, 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 calls for for proposals so in my point of view we are we are in the, the, the correct position from uh, for taking profit of an opportunity here and uh, yeah we will try to work as much as possible on that yeah, thank you, Paul. So you see a sort of um, smooth evolution from the first program to this this uh, current one. And uh, now I would like to ask the same to Alessandra and Moshe uh, from your perspectives, and also probably uh, you have in mind probably the health cluster in Horizon Europe. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, what is your, your thoughts about this? Yeah, uh, yeah, I was listening carefully to the various uh, colleagues, uh, you know, comments and uh, yeah, of course, there are there are many issues and points that we should consider, we may consider, but uh, I partially agree uh, with Giuliano related uh, to the EU uh, Horizon program. So it is true that uh, uh, definitely EU, EU framework pro uh, research program uh, programs have uh, you know, really, really created the, the, the true European citizen, which are, you know, the, the research community. So that's a matter of fact. We are working together from years. We are speaking the same language. We increase the hugely our uh, collaboration opportunities. So I think you has done a great job. Of course, uh, we have now very particularized, so it's true that some calls are, are very specific, and it is also true that we have some networks of colleagues which are very well established because they are working together from years. So the point is, in terms of EU, that thanks to this framework, we, we have, you know, increased also bilateral collaborations, for example, the one we are discussing now, so between Italy and Israel. So this is a bridge, basically, across countries and is, uh, has primed up uh, specific bilateral collaboration. What I see perhaps, uh, and this is what ERC funding does, so to have a bottom-up, fully bottom-up approach in terms of research project, is missing a little bit in the horizon program. So that will, will allow to increase the participation perhaps of young people, of young research, promising researchers. And perhaps we should find a way to increase and to sort of integrate younger researchers across Europe. And of course, in our case, in Italy and Israel in this research collaborative schemes. Perhaps this is something we may think about in our bilateral Italy-Israel collaborations to have something that is, you know, somehow, uh, you know, facilitating the participation of novel young groups to research projects. And that would be really a great uh, help in increasing the you know, variety and the, to be comprehensive in terms of research community. Thank you, Alessandra. Thank you for your focus also on the careers of the young researchers. And then, uh, Moshe, would you like to end up and to tell yeah. us your experience? Yeah, I'll shortly uh, give a few words. Uh, so for us, this is our first experience in joining a consortium. We are a, you know, a startup. This is our first opportunity. Uh, so I can relate to some of the things that uh, 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 that Giovanni said before, that uh, things are getting more uh, specific. Uh, still, uh, we managed to find and see few opportunities which are uh, still relevant, um, which you know, which is a, which I guess is a is, is a good thing. Um, 
I also want to, to echo what, uh, what was said before, that there are a few networks that one needs to, to see how to properly connect to, to a network in order to, to find a consortium and find the right partners. I think, I, I think this is still a challenge um, and it's not, it's not very easy. And some of the suggestions that, uh, that were made here might, uh, you know, should be taken into, into account and see if there are, I know that I said uh, on, on the Israeli side are doing uh, uh, lots of effort on this, but I think that any, any initiative that would help find and relate and, uh, you know, connect with other uh, uh, researchers, researchers and organization would, would facilitate and, and help this process because it's still a, it's still a, a challenge. Thank you very much, uh, Moshe. And I would like to thank uh, you and all the speakers today in this round table. And uh, you really provide us uh, really helpful and fruitful uh, thoughts for, uh, for, for um, yeah, uh, thinking about how to improve bilateral cooperation. And um, I would like now to uh, give the floor to Stefano Ventura um, before closing with, uh, uh, with Serena from APRE. Uh, she will provide an overview of the funding opportunities under Horizon Europe and also our joint tool uh, to facilitate matchmaking between uh, RNI uh, communities in Israel and Italy. But first, uh, I would give the floor to uh, Stefano Ventura, presenting uh, two key opportunities by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation in Italy, especially to call for proposal for the industrial and scientific cooperation. Stefano, the floor is yours. Uh, if, if you are uh, here connected, I can... Uh, yes, I yes, I am you. here. Thank, thank you, Mathilde. And uh, I've been asked to, to tell just uh, to come back to the bilateral uh, agreement. I think that as, as has been also pointed out by other speakers, uh, it's an initial opportunity to widen the, uh, the, the collaboration uh, uh, between Italy and Israel. But uh, I think it has a, a, it's useful. Of course, uh, it's a, a small instrument, but uh, why not to use it if it is possible? There's uh, some bureaucracy, but uh, we live uh, immersed, immersed in bureaucracy, so it's, it's normal. Um, I, I put in the chat the, um, uh, the, the link to the uh, calls. There are two open calls. There's uh, the link on the uh, website of the um, Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, there are the the course have be also be also be published uh, on the um, uh, websites of the Ministry of Science and Technology and uh, on the Mini on the Innovation Authority. Uh, we have two kinds of calls that are now open. One is the call for uh, industrial project, bilateral project. It will uh, close on the 24th of May and uh, two um, uh, companies, one in Israel and one in Italy, has to join and to submit a proposal for an innovative product. Uh, any kind of uh, innovative product, uh, there's no limitation, uh, but uh, uh, it has been innovative and uh, um, the, the project, uh, two years project, should uh, include a, a part of uh, research and development of the, of the product uh, uh, up to a stage uh, that is good for commercialization. Then you will find all details in the course. So I don't, I don't uh, want to, to speak about it now because there's not time enough. Um, the other call is this, uh, the call for bilateral scientific projects. Uh, it will close a little earlier on the 12th of May. And uh, for the Israeli partners, please notice that you have to upload uh, a preliminary uh, text for the call by the sec by May to by May the second, and then you can modify it. But if you don't it, uh, don't do it uh, by May two, they, the, then you are not able to upload it later. But in any case, the final proposal will be due uh, on uh, uh, May 12th, and it's for uh, bilateral uh, applied, mostly applied research, but it's also basic research 
not necessarily uh, connected with commercialization, absolutely. And uh, there are two uh, subjects uh, this year. One is on uh, hydrogen as a renewable uh, uh, source of energy. And uh, the other one is on uh, mat new materials uh, for soft robot robotics. Uh, they are both very interesting uh, subjects uh, and uh, they open uh, the possibility to submit very strong proposals, very good proposals. So you can find the, the, the link uh, and for any, any needs, uh, we are here to uh, help uh, and also the Ministry of Science and Technology and the Innovation Authority uh, will help uh, for the uh, presentation of uh, strong proposals. Uh, thank you for the very nice meeting, very good opportunity, and I hope that it will uh, help uh, in submitting strong proposals at the European level, increasing the participation, the coordinated participation of Italian and uh, Israeli uh, research teams. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefano. And now I would um, ask Smadar if you would like to compliment about uh, uh, these opportunities that are joined to the ministry. Merci. I can just uh, add that this is a great opportunity to raise the awareness about the possibilities. And I just suggest to all the people who are interested to find a partner on the other side, to contact the two agencies, ISERD and APRE, or to contact us and we will really do our best to find the right relevant partner from the other side. And thank you very much for all the people who uh, participated. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I would now give the floor to Serena, anticipating to all the participants that now we are providing you with this overview of funding opportunities, but then we will come back to you with a follow-up email, uh, providing you with all the materials uh, that have been presented in this uh, event and also the access to the open matchmaking tool that we'll present in, in a while to, for you to facilitate matchmaking between our RNI communities. Serena, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Matilda. And thank you for everybody for staying till now. Um, I have a presentation that should show you uh, which are the opportunities open into the Horizon Europe program for Israel and Italian cooperation. It's a general presentation about Horizon Europe because I don't have so much time to explore more in deeply which are the main topics that are actually open in the different work programs. But I would like just to give you a general overview about uh, the Horizon Europe program that is the most ambitious uh, European research and innovation framework program and where you can find uh, amazing opportunities um, for enforcing the science, uh, the scientific and technological cooperation between uh, Europe and uh, um, between Europe um, in order to uh, reinforce not only the science and technology, but also the society and the, the economy that is part uh, of the main aims of the framework program. Um, as most of you know, the, the, the Radio Europe structure is based on three main pillars with some differences. Um, as you can see from this uh, slide, in the pillar one that is most dedicated to excellent science and in pillar three that is most dedicated to innovation, in, uh, innovation in Europe, um, you can find a so-called bottom-up approach where participants can um, uh, choose the topic of the, their research in their proposals. Um, in any case, uh, I would like to um, focus more on the second pillar of Horizon Europe, that is the global challenges and European industrial competitiveness pillar, uh, where the main activities are based on the uh, work program uh, that are dedicated to the six clusters of Horizon Europe. In the second pillar, we have a so-called top-down approach where the European Commission is going to give you uh, the main uh, framework um, for the, the main um, highlights about uh, uh, impact and scientific and technological uh, objective of your research. Uh, why it's important, in my opinion, the second, second pillar and why I would like to dedicate on that. 
um, because if you are going to see uh, the main area of cooperation between uh, Italy and Israel, you can see uh, that the, uh, the most important project funded in Horizon 2020 are in the areas that are covered today in Horizon Europe by the second pillar and by the cluster. As you can see from the budget uh, distribution of the uh, 95 billion euro of Horizon Europe for the next seven years, you can see that the second pillar have most, more than 50% of the budget and the areas are um, major cooperation uh, and major budget dedicated. Uh, it's um, uh, the area of digital industry and space, climate, energy and mobility, and also food by economy and environment. Uh, these areas are really important also in comparison uh, in the comparison between the area of um, uh, strong cooperation between Italy and Israel in Horizon 2020, as you can see in the first part in the, in the, in the left part of the slide, and the main program and cluster in Horizon Europe. I try to highlight a bit uh, in evidence uh, the most interesting area for cooperation, also based on the um, uh, on the budget shared in cooperation between Italy and Israel in Horizon 2020. Um, you can see, for example, in the first pillar that Italy and Israel uh, today in Horizon Europe can find uh, um, some interesting area of cooperation in the Madis Lovoska Curie Action, but also in the research infrastructure that it's uh, that was um, a really strong area of interest in the past Horizon 2020. Regarding the third pillar, I would like just to focus my intention, my, my, my your attention in the European Innovation Council, especially for the Pathfinder program that is into the AEC program, uh, that is uh, a sort of mirroring of what the, the future and emerging technologies, the FAT program was in the previous program. Uh, but beside uh, the opportunities available in the first and in the third pillar of Horizon Europe, I would like to focus more the attention of the second pillar. As you can see, the second pillar um, is dedicated to uh, several areas of cooperation, as, as you can see in this slide. And the idea is to boosting the key technology and solution that are uh, based uh, mainly on the um, European Union policies and on the sustainable development goals. Um, it's very important that in Horizon Europe, you uh, should link uh, the main um, priority for research and innovation to the key strategic orientation in research and innovation that are, that are uh, very important for link the um, uh, opportunity of research to the policy priority of the European Commission. I don't want to be too much exhaustive about that in my presentation, but just to give you a general orientation about the main strategic um, area for research and innovation that we can find in Horizon Europe, like digital transformation, environmental protection, sustainable development, and resilience and inclusiveness. Um, discussing about the pillar two um, and the opportunities that are open into the uh, cluster of Horizon Europe, it's very important to um, have uh, um, uh, clear in your mind uh, that this pillar and um, opportunities of research that are available in the cluster are based on the impact driven approach. That means that uh, uh, the research uh, um, and innovation solution that you are going to develop into the project should have also an impact in the long period also on society and on the economy. So it's very important to try to have a long-term vision about the uh, project that you are going to present in Horizon Europe to link your project to the main uh, view and policies of European of European view. Uh, the pillar two opportunities are based on this top-down approach, which research and innovation topic already defined predefined by European Commission. Uh, it's very important to consider that in all the uh, opportunities available into the cluster of Horizon Europe, uh, uh, there is a collaborative approach. That means um, that the consortium of partners should present this project and the consortium should be based uh, on a minimum um, eligibility condition um, that stands stand that at least three independent legal entities uh, should 
participant in the proposal. Each of these um, three legal, uh, legal entities uh, should be established in different member states of associated countries. So, for example, a minimum consortium for Horizon Europe in the cluster should be composed by an Italian legal entity plus an Israel legal entity plus other countries. Usually, three is the minimum number because we are used, used to uh, have evidence that in Horizon uh, framework programs, uh, the partnership is uh, um, uh, a very good number of participant members uh, into the consortium that should be around 20 or 10 or 30 uh, depends on the, um, the kind of action and the activities that are, that are foreseen. It's very important also to underline the role of the industry and the citizen into the new topic of Horizon Europe, especially the role uh, of the citizen and of the society is going to growing up in the Horizon Europe uh, um, call and, uh, and opportunities for funding compared with the past. Another important focus uh, uh, also for cooperation in Horizon Europe between Italian and Israel partners could be also in the European partnership and into the missions that are a sort of program into the programs and that offer additional opportunities on what it's put in evidence in the different cluster work programs. Um, I don't have the time to go too much into uh, this slide because the timing is very hard today, uh, but you can see in my material that will be shared to all the participants after the event uh, some details about uh, the different uh, um, uh, main priority line available in the cluster that are of more uh, interest between Italy and Israel. Uh, like cluster one, three, four, five, and six. I put also in evidence if uh, uh, for each cluster that are uh, opportunities open in the um, actual uh, work program 2021-2022. As you can see, for example, for health sector, uh, the work program also 2022, it's already closed for now, but the commission is working to the next uh, work program 2023-2024. Uh, and I will show you the timeline for the next publication of the new opportunities. In any case, for example, for the health sector, it's very important also to consider what is going to be published into the uh, European partnership, European institutionalized partnership about innovative health initiative. That is the, uh, the, the, the following partnership of IMI that we um, already experimented in the Horizon 2020. The um, in, in innovative health initiative work program will be published in June of this year. So it, it's going to offer additional opportunity in this sector uh, based on the European partnership approach. Uh, here you can see the different destinations that are the main line of research available also in the next work program, 2023-2024. Um, the same structure that I show you for cluster one, you can show, you can see also for cluster three, that it's about security. Here you can see, for example, that the um, work program 2022 is going to be open in June and the deadlines will be at the end of November of this year. So about the uh, security sector, uh, and here you can see the main destination, the main calls that will be foreseen for this um, uh, work program. Um, the, the, the opportunities uh, are open and you can also have a look about the topic of research that are put, um, that, that will be funded by, by European Commission. Regarding cluster four, that is another a huge area of cooperation between Italy and Israel, um, that it's about a digital industry and space. Uh, um, the work program 2022 is partially open. Uh, we have um, some deadlines, especially for the digital side, uh, that will be still open uh, till April and till November of this year. Here you can see the main area um, of destination uh, for this um, uh, work program 2021 2022. Uh, the main title, the main highlights for each destination will, will remain the same also for the next work program, 
uh, probably some uh, um, areas, some uh, uh, specific area of research that are shown in the um, um, colorful box in this slide will be little changed in the next um, work program 2023-2024. Uh, going on to the cluster five about climate energy mobility, we already see that in the area of smart mobility, but also in the area of climate change and energy, there was in the past several areas of cooperation between uh, uh, Italian and Israel expertise. Uh, what I can say you about the work program 2022 is that we have um, um, some calls already open, especially in the energy sector, uh, with that line, with different deadline um, open between April and of this year and January next year. Um, you should go in the, into the work program and for the topic that are your interests, you can find easily the, uh, the deadline of your interests. Um, here you can see the destination as for the other cluster, also for cluster five, the same destination, the same area of research will remain more or less the same also in the next work program 2023-2024. Now I'm going to show you um, the last cluster of interest that is cluster six about food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture and environment. Um, also uh, in this cluster, like in the cluster one, um, the work program 22 is already closed, but another opportunity is a uh, uh, result but uh, now in May with the publication of the Circular Bio-Based Europe work, work Program that is based on the European uh, um, institutionalized partnership about bio-based industry. So in May there will be these additional opportunities that came directly uh, by Cluster 6 uh, um, family, um, priority family. Here you can find the destination as for the other teams, also this, uh, um, this seven destination will remain the same in the next, next work program. Um, as I say you, the next work program in 2023 to 2024, it's not yet published. Um, the European Commission together with the member states are working for the definition of the main priority for the next set of fun funding opportunities for the next two years. The timeline showed um, that uh, by the end of this year, um, the final uh, work program will be published and the different opportunity will be um, available for all the participants. Um, now I'm going um, to close uh, my presentation. I just would like to remind you that APRE has a uh, agency for the promotion of European research in its role uh, of uh, informing and assistance the national community about the framework program uh, can give you any kind of information and assistance about uh, the next opportunities and uh, how to participate uh, into the Horizon Horizon Europe program. So you can get additional information surfing in our websites and also uh, registering to our um, database for receiving additional information. Um, now, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, I remain at your disposal and I pass the floor uh, to my director, uh, Mark Marco Falsetti for the closing remarks of this event. So thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Serena. And I, I, I would like to, to pass immediately the floor to Neely. I, I don't see in the picture, but I'm sure she, she is on the back. Yes, yes, uh, I'm here. Yes, yeah, sorry, I, I got it. I got you. Sorry. Thanks again. We are, uh, we are running out of time. We are already quite a lot out of time. So uh, uh, um, I would invite Neely to, to say the same things that probably I'm going to say today. I just close saying I'm quite happy and satisfied with this day, uh, but I would like to remind you that as far as concerned APRE and for sure as far as concerned uh, ESERT, uh, this is just a step toward again and repeat our commitment to create the best condition for a smooth and friendly possibility 
to provide service to you as a stakeholder to create the future bridge and collaboration in Horizon Europe. So that is our commitments, and that is what we, we are certainly continuing to do that to do in the next steps. Nili, please. I think that you thank you very much, Marco. And, I'm sorry, Marco. I'm sorry, Nili. Uh, I would like just to add one thing that could be useful for them, uh, for the participants, uh, uh, just for an operative point of view, uh, before the political uh, closing remarks. Um, just few uh, few words because uh, um, together, Up and Lizard um, uh, organized this uh, open matchmaking tool uh, just to. Um, uh, try to find a place for sharing expertise and potential interest be between Italian and Israel um, entities that would like to cooperate in research and innovation. Um, so we prefer the sort of uh, um, very um, easy uh, tool for try to uh, sharing your competencies, uh, your interest in finding partners. And um, we will send to all the participants a follow-up email for showing uh, this tool for all people that would like to uh, in include um, its profile in this open matchmaking tool that is similar to what you did in the chat during this event. So try to talk to your uh, potential um, counterpart, uh, your area of expertise, your interest, in order to have uh, a continuous tool for try to fix the uh, potential potential cooperation. So just to, just to give you to give to the participant this information that will be better explaining uh, in the follow up mailing that will reach all the participants. Sorry for that, uh, and thank you for everybody. Okay, that's just the first steps. Again, Nili, you can thank you. argue better yeah. on that. Thank you, Serena, and thank you all the team for organizing. I think that the main thing that I heard from, uh, from everyone is the importance of the matchmaking, is the importance of finding the right groups, finding the right contact people. Once you get them and you continue, uh, you get to 14 projects like Giovanni and... Uh, and others. So here you have a uh, double force of APRE and ISERD uh, working together to make this happen with the matchmaking tool as one tool. Also, we would like to encourage you to approach us and raise specific topics that you're interested in. And we will do our best to organize round table around specific topics. This is something that we also do as a service and we'll try to find a collaboration both bilaterally from Italy and from Israel. And we need also other countries to join as well in order to have uh, proposals. So this is something we also encourage you to do. I would like to thank everybody for staying over time. And I'm impressed with the number of people that stayed with us from the beginning till now. And I hope that this is, um, opening of a wonderful friendship and continuation of a wonderful friendship. So thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Goodbye.